administrator and CEO, Stephen Bjorn. Morning and thank you. I appreciate everyone taking time out of their schedules uh, to come down for what I believe is a very important and hopefully inaugural event in terms of commemorating the fallen workers uh, here in the state of Ohio. You know, this year we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the workers' compensation system in the state of Ohio. Uh, this system was born out of the struggles in the early part of the last century uh, to make workplaces safer and more just for those individuals working to build Ohio and the nation's economies, as well as building their own personal dreams. Out of a system of contentious conflict, injuries, and at times even death, was created the system we now call the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Although those of us who are in the middle of the BWC process on a daily basis often get distracted by all of the various elements of this operation, at the end of the day, we should be ever mindful that it is a system created for and about people, real people. The BWC's primary objective is to make workplaces safer, care for individuals and families who have suffered or experienced a workplace injury, as well as aid the success of businesses who seek prosperity and vitality here in our state. So today, we come together on the eve of Labor Day to celebrate labor and work, to remember the men and women who do the work that builds our state's economy but also builds stronger families and homes and communities in our state and in our culture. Ohio became and remains a great state because of the industry and hard work of so many of our people. Today with us as we begin, I want to recognize all those who are watching on BWC TV across the state and thank you for, for tuning in with us. I also want to thank a number of people who are here today. Several of our board members you're going to hear from in a few moments. Uh, as they join me in this commemoration today. But in addition to the three board members who are here, at least the three that I'm aware who are here, uh, we have a number of other important guests, and I'm certainly not going to name them all by name today, uh, but I do want to recognize a, a representative from Governor Kasich's office who is with us today. Dawn, thank you for being here. Uh, we also have leadership from business, from labor, from several attorney organizations, uh, various other stakeholders, and including several charitable stakeholders who benefit uh, injured workers across our state. I'm sure we have public officials and, and others also joining us today. And I want to thank those folks for taking time uh, this morning for this very important uh, commemoration event. I wanted to reflect for just a moment on work and, and labor. Of course, Labor Day, we all reflect on work, and we take a day off to do it, which I guess is a good thing. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, we, we often, and, and I think should, reflect on labor and what work means. I, I looked up a couple of passages to, to bring my own uh, remarks in line today. You think back to the ancient philosopher Horace, who said, Life grants nothing to us mortals without hard work. Thomas Carlyle in the 1700s said that all work, even cotton spinning, is noble. Work is alone noble. A life of ease is not for any man. And our own American Benjamin Franklin said, When men are employed, they are best contented. For on the days they worked, they were good-natured and cheerful. And with the consciousness of having done a good day's work, they spent the evening jollily. I think that best characterizes work and what it means to us. And sometimes we need to reflect, in fact, I was surprised as I pulled the numbers to, together for this morning, that each day in Ohio, more than 5 million people go to work. Unfortunately, some of them never come home. Although long-term records are incomplete, we know in the last 30 years that more than 7,600 workers lost their lives on the job in Ohio. Last year alone, 145 workers uh, were killed here in Ohio. We are thankful today that that number continues to fall every year and that Ohio's workplaces are far safer than they were even a generation ago. Many can share the credit for all of these efforts. However, we also realize that each and every loss leaves a hole in a family and in the fabric of our culture. It is hard to characterize collectively 
who these individuals were that were the victims of accidents and death in Ohio's workplaces last year. However, we know that they were sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, moms and dads, and that in each case they will be sorely missed. We also know that each of them was pursuing work in our state to better their situation and in a broader sense their community and this very state. We thank each of them and their families for their labors and their sacrifices for the greater good of our state. The story is told of a man who walked by a construction work and observed three men working together on a project. He approached the first man and asked what he was doing, and the man, in somewhat of a gruff tone, said, I'm breaking rocks. He approached the second and asked what he was doing, and the man said, I'm building a building. He approached the third and asked him, what are you doing here today? And the man, with joy in his eyes and a smile on his face, stepped back and said, I'm building a cathedral. Today, as I reflect on the workers who were lost, it is my hope that they believed that through their work, they were in fact building a cathedral, and that their lives will be seen as something more than simply a job, but for a greater good for our state and our nation. We wish today for peace to those lost workers and their families. With that, I'm very proud having participated with us.